Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. We have a brand new Mercedes SL for 2023 and what we're going to do in this video is talk about this design. I'm going to show you the differences between the SL43 and compare that to the 53 and the 63 and then I'm also going to show you how similar this SL design is to the Porsche 911. It's incredible, Rosie. So that's what we're gonna have a look at in this video. But before we do that, let's have a look at what the SL43 actually is. So last year, we saw the introduction of an all new Mercedes SL with the four liter bi-turbo engine options, both of them, the SL53 with 470 horsepower, and then the big brother SL63 with 577 horsepower. Now Mercedes has released the SL43 and there is no V8 here, not even a V6. The SL43 is powered by a four cylinder with some F1 exhaust turbo technology. It's fantastic, Rosie. You need to learn about this stuff. So as I said, in this video, what I wanna do is show you how you can tell the little brother apart visually from its V8 siblings. There are some subtle changes to the design that in some ways make the SL43 maybe a little bit more elegant in my opinion more on that when we jump into photoshop to compare the front and the rear of these three versions and then also i want to show you the comparison to the 911 it gets really really interesting when we do this experiment that we're going to do later in photoshop so powering the base sl the sl43 is a new variant of amg's two liter four cylinder and it actually has less power than the Mercedes AMG A45S hatchback. The hatch, it puts out 416 horsepower, while the SL43 only gets 375. However, it's good to keep in mind here that the four-cylinder in the A45S is currently the most powerful four-cylinder in production, and 375 horsepower in the SL probably isn't all that bad for just, you know, cruising around. But in my opinion, having a four-cylinder in the SL, it might might be a good option for some people but at the end of the day it is Mercedes flagship convertible and it just doesn't feel right without that torque and the rumble of a proper V8. Philosophically, it, it, it just feels wrong to have a four-cylinder in the SL. I don't know, that's just my opinion. The good news, however, is that it's still a quick car and it gets a lot better fuel economy with the smaller engine, obviously. It's connected to a nine-speed automatic, driving the rear wheels only, and zero to 60 miles per hour it takes 4.9 seconds with a top speed of 171 miles per hour the 43 also gets around 25 to 26.4 miles per gallon so maybe it isn't such a bad deal after all it's not entirely clear whether the sl43 will make it here to the u.s is the majority of people here in the uh, here in the u.s prefer the SL with a V8 option. I think that a four-cylinder SL, it probably would sell, but nowhere near as well as the V8 options here. That's that's for the American market. If none of the new SLs are powerful enough for you, don't worry, because in addition to the SL43, the 53, and the 63, Mercedes is currently working on the Monster SL, which is going to probably be called the SL63E Performance. And listen to this. This will be the top of the line SL with a twin turbocharged 4 liter V8 connected to an electric motor in addition to this massive 4 liter V8. And this is going to make a tire shredding 831 horsepower and 1023 pound-feet of torque. Good luck to the rear wheels on that version. Now let's jump into the <laughs> to Photoshop here. Let's have a look at these designs. Just look how beautifully colored these are. I just love the layout that we have here in Photoshop. I want to show you the subtle differences between the 43. If you see these out on the streets, you can tell who went for the poor man option, which is the 43, and who went for the V8 options. In the front end, there's not a lot of differences here. You can see this is the 43. In the middle, we have the 53. Down here, we have the Beast, which is the 63 AMG. The biggest dif differences in the front end, there are a little more differences in the rear, which I'm gonna show in a second, but you have a different design on the lower part of this uh, front end right here. So this mouth down here, it looks different on the, on the 43 than it does on the 53 and also the 53. I can't really tell any difference from the 63. I'm not sure there are any. You can see that the front, that the lower part here has an opening all the way throughout from one point to the other. So there is no kind of body piece or wing that cuts in to this design, which we have right here. 
if you look at the 53 so this looks exactly like the uh, 63 as well we have this wing sticking up like that like a c shape cutting off this piece right here which we have on the 43 and i have to say this design has actually grown on me quite a bit i made a redesign on the my the sketch monkey channel the first channel to show you what I would, what I thought the Mercedes SL could look like, a bit more of a conservative redesign there, and make it more elegant and less and less aggressive. I don't think the SL should be an aggressive design. To me, the SS, SL is all about elegance and uh, presence, and not so much about having this frowning front face. Specifically, what I did there was to sw uh, flop out this grille, so we have these angles pointing up. I wanted to have the more elegant, like the a traditional grill like this so kind of flip that invert the, 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 the grill and also work a little bit on the headlights which I think kind of clash if you look at this sharp design of the headlight it, it I don't know it, it feels like it's clashes with for example this graphic feature and the grill they all have very soft radiuses everywhere but then you have the headlights being almost a triangle with a design with a ruler so that was a bit of a uh, it clashed a little bit those graphic features in the front end but looking at the 63 compared to the 53 I think this is the difference here is just that we have the uh, the carbon fiber package on the 63 which we don't have on the 53 so for example you have this piece right here as you can see this little chrome piece is uh, carbon fiber on the 63 and also the side mirrors we have body colored right here carbon fiber on the 63 and also this piece down here is what i can see being carbon fiber on the 63 compared to the 53 so not a big difference there i don't i think you can get the carbon you, yeah i know you can get the carbon fiber on the 53 so you can may, basically make them look exactly the same let's have a look at the rear view this is where it gets a little bit more um, uh, differences in the in the uh, in the three versions as I said the 53 63 essentially the same keep in mind that the 63 in this uh, comparison here has the carbon fiber package but the big difference here is of course the labeling this is flipped now just to have a nice continuity in this lineup but this obviously obviously says SL 43 if you look at it in the rear view that's the easiest way to tell these apart but looking down here we have some differences in the lower part we have oval tailpipes compared to squarish tailpipes in the 53 and obviously also in the 63 another difference is you see this air vent right here in this piece doesn't exist on the 43 and honestly i think i prefer we have a cat fight going on down there if you can hear it i'm um, sorry about that hey eugene 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 is fighting with orla Hopefully they keep quiet for a little bit here. Honestly, I think I prefer this design because it feels more, again, it feels more elegant for an SL to not have all these air outlets. You can have it on the top of the line, the, uh, the 830 horsepower SL. Yes, put whatever you need to, uh, redu to uh, remove engine heat and work on the aerodynamics and so on. But for the base model, I think it was a good idea from Mercedes to, to remove this outtake that we have right here it, it just creates a, a lot cleaner rear end in my opinion in addition to that change you also has the housing around the tailpipes being different so we don't have any spe specific housing for the tailpipes on the 43 but you can clearly see that it's a different color on the 53 and the 63 but the main thing is if you were looking at a rear end of a new SL and you want to know which one it is if it's a v8 or a four cylinder just look at the tailpipes if it's square it's a v8 if it's round it's a four cylinder cylinder and here again I also made a redesign of the rear end uh, a while ago on the sketch monkey channel just to make it look less like a 911 which I'm gonna show you right now it's really interesting to see just how similar these designs are when we strip away the graphic features and that's what we're gonna do but I made a redesign with this to kind of square off the rear end a little bit more to not have it be so sloping in the rear end typical 911 style for the Mercedes uh, SL but now let's look at the comparison between the 911 and the SL and let me show you just how similar these two are again if you hear some bells ringing in the background we currently have two foster kittens and they are going crazy here in the office so right now Orla is playing with some toy back there. I hope you don't mind the sound of that. I can't stop her from doing that, unfortunately. But she's having fun over there, so it's all good. But here is the Mercedes SL, obviously, up top. And the Porsche 911 down there at the bottom. Now, you could say, 
but hey you can definitely tell these apart just look at the graphic features for example in the taillight we have this uh, different shape here triangular shape compared to the Porsche 911 which has a clear light bar typical Porsche stretching all the way from one end to the other it's easy to tell this apart and you don't know what you're talking about but let me show you the experiment that we're gonna do here so let's remove these lines and let's say that we put the same wheels on both of these cars and we remove all the graphic features that we can see from this angle and then we make it monochromatic so we make it into a gray grayscale and this is what happens when we do that and just look at how similar these two designs are we, we don't even have clear shoulder lines on either of the, these designs it's very smooth Mercedes these days even up here over the rear fenders there's no real clear design uh, line or sharpness in the rear fenders and same thing for the Porsche we do have the headlights sticking out a little bit more right here as you can see but the overall shape of these designs is very very similar to each other even the rear end which is typical dip here for the Porsche and now we have the same kind of dip on the Mercedes it's I, that's the reason why I wanted to square off the tail end of the SL a little bit more than we have here It is a beautiful looking machine the new SL don't get me wrong and they're both German So I can see that they have some uh, some family DNA mixed with each other there But still to put these two a little bit further apart just to make the SL more of a R129 rear end which to me is as you know, I'm sure my favorite SL of all time is just a fantastic Bruno Sacco design that is timeless. It's gonna look just as good in 1989 when it was introduced and it's gonna just look exactly or even more beautiful a hundred years from now when companies have tried all kinds of different styles on their cars and we're still gonna go back to the classic, elegant, beautifully sculpted Mercedes SL R129. It's gonna be a fantastic design and that's kind of the feeling I wanted to bring in into the Mercedes Mercedes SL when I did the redesign so looking at these two we have the same kind of line down here as we have in the Mercedes down here up here as well as I don't know it was just a fun experiment that uh, when I saw the SL I just wanted to show you this and make this uh, Photoshop experiment that we're doing here to show you how similar these two actually are when you break down the uh, the details when you take away the the graphic features and just look at the cars as a sculpture i do like the new mercedes sl i still haven't seen one out on the streets but i think when i do i'm gonna change my opinion about the front end i i'm probably gonna think it's uh, it, 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 i know i'm gonna think it's gonna look a lot better when you see it in real life that's always the uh, most of the time it's the case if you see something wrong in the 2D world and you see it out in 3D, usually the 3D world makes a lot more sense once you eventually get to see it out in the, on the streets and in real life. What are your thoughts on the new Mercedes Esta? Let me know in the comments below and let me know if you agree with me that they look a little bit too similar here maybe and should they separate a bit more in their design language between the SL Roadster and the uh, Porsche 911.